You guys know that we ask multiple questions each and every week. The first question will be this one. Uh, what are the highest rated games for this weekend? You guys know that I love to give out predictions on what the highest rated TV games will be for the weekend. This is what I'm looking at. Number one, I think, will be Alabama at Arkansas. I think that thing could be a little bit tricky anytime Alabama almost gets beat or is in a ball game tight in the fourth quarter. Uh, the ratings go through the roof. This one's on CBS in the 3.30 p.m. Eastern time slot. Alabama-Arkansas, I think, will be one. NC State at Clemson, two, especially if the weather gets a little wacky. Uh, that one could be tricky. I think that's going to be number two on ABC in the primetime window. Michigan at Iowa is the Fox noon game. I don't necessarily believe that this one's going to be close, but Michigan has shown now that they have made it to a playoff, their numbers are through the roof no matter who they're playing. So with this being the Fox big noon kickoff game, uh, yeah, I think Michigan at Iowa is a big time slot here. Oklahoma at TCU, that one's on ABC. That's another one that's number four for me. Uh, the 11 a.m. Kentucky at Ole Miss game. That's a top 15 matchup. Lane Kiffin against Mark Stoops, etc. I think that one is going to be number five. And then number six for me is Oklahoma State at Baylor. I think that those are going to be your top six highest rated games for this weekend. Uh, the most exciting games. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that one. I've got Kentucky at Ole Miss. I think that was going to be really, really exciting because I don't anticipate Kentucky scoring a ton of points, but also don't expect Ole Miss to score a lot. I think this one's going to be tight all the way down the line. Uh, I have no idea who's going to win this game. I know Ole Miss is a seven-point favorite, but you're telling me that Ole Miss is going to be able to run on them? Like, I just, I, I don't necessarily buy it. Uh, Oklahoma State at Baylor. I mean, that's a two-point spread. I got no idea what's going to happen in that game. I got no clue. <laughs> absolutely no clue. Uh, number three for the most exciting game or the game with the closest score, Washington at UCLA. I think you're going to see some big plays, some explosive plays. I think you're going to see a lot of points. Uh, I do think Washington wins that game, but, man, I, I do expect there to be some fireworks in L.A. Uh, I think the Rose Bowl is going to be a lot of fun that night. Uh, no, I don't expect a lot of fans, but who does at this point? NC State at Clemson, I think, could be really, really close, especially if you've got weather out there. Um, that one, that could be tricky. Very tricky. We could see uh, a game that's played in the teens. Uh, so I could certainly see where every single play in that ball game matters. And uh, finally, most exciting game, Iowa State at Kansas. I just, I think there's going to be points galore. I think Jalen Daniels is going to do his thing. He is shockingly good. I mean, just unbelievably good. So, yeah, Iowa State at Kansas as one of the most exciting games of the weekend. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose this weekend? I've only got three that I've written down here. Uh, NC State and Clemson. Uh, whoever wins this basically has a game-and-a-half lead heading into the ACC championship game. I know that it is the beginning of October when this game is being played. It's October 1st. But those two are the uh, front runners. As far as the ACC title is concerned, uh, yeah, I, whoever wins this is going to have a game and a half lead in that division as they are both in the same division. And whoever loses is going to need the other one to lose twice. And I don't know that that's going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, give me that one. That's a, a massive stakes game. Kansas, the idea that they could get game day, et cetera, they're undefeated right now. Uh, you got to win these games at home. Iowa State is good. They are not Oklahoma. They are not uh, Texas, et cetera. Like it's, and Kansas already beat Texas last year. I get that. But what I'm saying is as far as the talent advantage goes, I don't think Iowa State is that much more talented than Kansas. Uh, just bottom line. So I think that one's big. And as far as the most to lose, I mean, give me Texas. They're playing West Virginia this week. You got Red River next week. If you're Texas, you've already lost to Alabama. You already lost on the road to Texas Tech. You lose at home to West Virginia right before Red River. Let's say you take a, a close loss here and a close loss in Red River. You're sitting at what? Two and four? At the halfway point? How does Steve Sarkeesian's bunch uh, deal with adversity here? That's what I'm curious about because that is, I mean, that's a tricky, tricky situation. Uh, who is the most likely 10-plus point underdog 
to win outright. So which double-digit dog is going to win outright this weekend? Who's got the best opportunity? And I got two games here. I think that you guys understand that I do, I do like UAB. But Rice is a 10-point underdog against UAB this weekend. And Rice has been feisty. They lost by seven to Houston. They beat Louisiana by double digits, even though they were nearly a two-touchdown dog to Louisiana. Uh, this team looks like they might have something going for them. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but Rice went into UAB not that long ago and won as, I mean, a 24, 25-point underdog. I mean, just won the game outright. It wouldn't shock me to see them get this win. Just saying. UAB could be overlooking them in the spot. We'll see. Uh, and then I put down Georgia Southern as a 10-point underdog against Coastal Carolina. There is a world where there's not a whole lot of weather in Conway, South Carolina, and Georgia Southern is able to open up that offense, and Kyle Van Trees is able to pass the ball around. If he's able to do that, that is the biggest weakness for Coastal Carolina's defense. It could get real tricky for Coastal. So 10 points, mm, I mean, might be willing to take a flyer on Georgia Southern on the money line just for the huge payday, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest a full unit or anything like that, but, you know, you put down some pizza money, basically. Uh, the G5 games of the week, I've, got, I've only got two of them here. San Jose State at Wyoming, I think, could get really, really interesting. It's going to be Windy and Laramie, <laughs> which, for you cover three listeners, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, but Wyoming has been secretly not sucky since the first game of the season. Craig Bowl has really developed this team into something interesting, to say the least. And San Jose State turns out pretty good football team. Like, Brent Brennan is doing a big-time job there, again, just like he did in the COVID season. I mean, this is these are two well-coached teams. So I think that's going to be a very interesting matchup. And then we've got Sunday football. SMU at UCF. A G5 game of the week, Sunday football, while the NFL games are going on. I'm interested in this. UCF, three to three-and-a-half point favorite, depending on where you're looking, uh, which you should be looking at BetUS. But regardless, that one, with it being moved back a day, yeah, color me intrigued. Color me intrigued. I am not sure. Uh, I don't know what to think of that one. I really don't. We're going to talk about it in the uh, CFP Pick'em here in just a minute, but... Yeah, that's uh, that's tricky. That's tricky. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.